Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. And today we're gonna to be doing the PlayStation 5 Pro technical presentation hosted by Mark Cerny. Now, today I was trying to do a live stream. For some reason, my internet didn't want to cooperate with me, and the stream was a disaster. It was going in and out, and I had to cancel the stream. So if you guys were watching the stream, I apologize, but here I am right now uploading a video so that we can react to this in real time. So I know some of you guys have obviously seen the presentation already. I was unable to see it because of my technical issues. So I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit annoyed right now. And I blame Xbox fans for this. Now, I'm only joking. Uh, it was my Internet. I don't know. It was just it was just acting up and I just I just couldn't get the stream right. So I apologize for this. But we're going to react now in real time. I'm going to give you guys my opinion on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Uh, I'm hoping that it delivers here and uh, yeah, we're going to react. So let's just find out. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay, with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it. Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run at 60 frames per second. mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on a mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. 
Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing. With graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but at double the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Jorah's orders. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray-traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray-tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy, allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run-through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built, and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, I was impressed with the performance of the PlayStation 5 Pro. I, I like what I saw with The Last of Us Part Two. I thought it made a big improvement, especially in the performance. The fidelity mode was running at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 Pro. They showed Ratchet and Clank with ray tracing performance running at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 Pro. That is double the performance of the regular PlayStation 5. Ghost of Tsushima is going to see a huge upgrade. Gran Turismo, you're gonna have the reflections on the track. Spider-Man is running at 60 FPS in his fidelity mode. Hogwarts, you're getting better ray tracing reflections. You're getting better performance. You're getting better shadows. The performance on the PlayStation 5 Pro overshadows the performance on the PlayStation 5. There is no doubt in that. And as I said on my initial video yesterday, when we got the news that the PlayStation 5 Pro is gonna be revealed today, that a lot of games are gonna see an uptick to 60 FPS because a lot of games this generation, they are GPU bound. And with the GPU no longer being the problem with the PlayStation 5 Pro, these games are gonna allow or, or the games are gonna be allowed to stretch their legs out. Now the 699 price point that we're seeing here, that is an amazing price point for this. Now I know my source said between 600 and 650, and they said it was going to be coming out the end of November. Um, 
I have to take the L on this. That information was not correct. I don't know if their information got changed at the last moment or if they were just given bad information. But nonetheless, $700, I truly believe is a good price for the PlayStation 5 Pro. You're getting a substantial improvement in performance. Now, on PC, most people play at 1440p. And if you wanna play at 1440p with like ray tracing and all the features turned up over 60 FPS, you're gonna be spending more than $700. You're gonna spend at least $1,000. And in fact, you're gonna spend more. I think $1,000 is kind of the low point, maybe if you get some bargains here and there. But let's just say $1,000. $1,000 is not going to have the same performance as a $700 PlayStation 5 Pro. I really don't think so. I think you're gonna be cutting some corners. I think the CPU would be better on that system because they didn't upgrade the CPU on the PlayStation 5 Pro, unfortunately. So the, the CPU, you can get better performance out of the CPU on the PC. So let's just say that. But you're not getting it for $700. You're gonna to have to pay more money to get better performance than the PlayStation 5 Pro. If you were to spend the same amount of money, 700 US dollars, you're not going to get the same performance as the PlayStation 5 Pro. Consoles price and performance, it just can't be beat. So some people might not like the $700 uh, price point, but I think it's affordable and I think it's fair. And I wanna know what you guys think about that. Maybe I'm just tripping because I buy everything on PC and PC is so expensive. Maybe this is too expensive for console guys. You guys let me know. But personally, I think for the improvements that you get over the PlayStation 5, I think it's a fair price. Now, the changes that they showed us, or I should say the differences in quality and infidelity, I think was quite substantial. I was able to noticeably see a lot of differences. And I'm just really impressed with the performance. We're getting 67% more compute units. We're getting faster RAM performance. We're getting better rendering. We're getting better ray tracing. We're getting better performance all around. The only, I would say, um, con of the PlayStation 5 Pro is that the CPU is still gonna be the same. So CPU uh, demanding games or CPU bound games are still gonna be pretty much CPU bound on the PlayStation 5 Pro. They're gonna get better performance, especially with the AI driven upscaling, but some of them won't achieve 60 FPS. But if they're achieving like 45, 50 with the improved VRR rate on the PlayStation 5 Pro, I think that's less of an issue. But games that are performing at 30 FPS, on the PlayStation 5, such as what we're seeing on the screen right now, The Last of Us Part 2, are going to perform in their fidelity mode on the PlayStation 5 Pro at 60 FPS. So as we're seeing here, we're seeing better resolution. The textures look about the same, but we're seeing better resolution. Uh, they're promising better features like shadows and also just the smoothness that you get from 60 FPS over 30 FPS is huge. Now, Spider-Man, my number one, uh, complaint with that game was that when it was running in its ray tracing mode, you had to take a hit in image quality. That's not going to be the case with the PlayStation 5 Pro as well with Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank, they demonstrated that you get a higher fidelity, you get higher graphics, and you get that frame rate that we so much desire. Now here, we're looking at the PS5 performance versus the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, as you guys can see, there is a lot more detail being resolved on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Here again with the PlayStation 5 Pro and the PlayStation 5 at Ratchet and Clank, as you can see in the distance, we have more um, details. We have higher frame rate, we have a higher resolution, and the same with the PlayStation 5 Pro and Spider-Man. So overall, it is a substantial upgrade over the PlayStation 5. Anybody saying otherwise, I just don't think they're being genuine. Now, whether or not it is worth a $700 price, that's gonna be up to the gamer. It's gonna be up to your needs. I'll give you an example, Final Fantasy. I have it for the PlayStation 5. It's like unplayable. The frame rate, it just tags, it jumps, it's all over the place. Now, I was waiting to play that game on PC. I no longer have to wait to play that game on PC because I'm gonna get better performance on the PlayStation 5 Pro, and I'm gonna get that 60 FPS. Forbidden West, look here, as you can see, the shadows, the details, the resolution, the in-game characters, the cutscene models, the skin, the hair, all receive improvements from the PlayStation 5 Pro. So overall, if you wanted to experience 60 FPS 
with the fidelity mode, you're going to be able to do that on the PlayStation 5 Pro. If you wanted to experience ray tracing, such as in Gran Turismo 7, on the track at 60 FPS, you will be able to do that on the PlayStation 5 Pro. That is a huge upgrade because the PlayStation 5 wasn't able to do that. Look at the ray tracing reflections we have here on the floor on Hogwarts and on the water. Look at the detail. Look at the draw distance. Everything is improved with the PlayStation 5 Pro. Look at the shadows. We're getting a more realistic image. We're getting higher resolution. We're getting better um, frame rate. We're getting better quality in the uh, settings. And we're getting this at an improved 60 FPS. So for me, it's a win-win. I'm going to be getting this console day one. I think a lot of people are, are going to be getting this console. I think a lot of new PlayStation 5 owners may opt to get the PlayStation 5 Pro. I think as we get closer to the launch, we're probably going to see more games utilizing the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're probably going to see more demonstrations. But from what I've seen today with Spider-Man, Ratchet & Clank, Horizon, it, it, it's, it's a big upgrade. Like I said, Final Fantasy is going to run better on the system. Forbidden West looks so much better. The Last of Us Part 2 at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 Pro in its fidelity mode means that we no longer have to wait to play some of these games on PC. We'll be able to get that 60 FPS smooth experience on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Ghost of Tsushima is going to run at 60 FPS in its highest quality mode on the PlayStation 5 Pro. So pretty much all the games that are at 30 FPS that aren't CPU bound on the PlayStation 5 will be running at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 Pro. And you cannot tell me that is not a huge upgrade. It's going to be the de facto place to play your multiplats if you want the best performance. The Xbox Series X can't do what the PlayStation 5 Pro is doing. The PlayStation 5 cannot do what the PlayStation 5 Pro is doing. We're getting better ray tracing. We're getting AI upscaling that will rival DLSS. Now, of course, I want to see it in action, and I don't think we're going to have that long to wait. I think we're going to see a lot of demonstrations before the console comes out, and we don't have a long time to wait for the console. It comes out on the 7th of November, which is just basically two months away. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about this. Like I said, I'm excited for this. This is going to be a day one purchase for me. Being able to take my PlayStation 5 games in fidelity mode that run at 30 FPS and run them at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 Pro is a huge upgrade for me. Being able to have ray tracing and all the features turned on and using PSSR to upscale to a high quality image is a huge upgrade for me. Anyways, I wanna know what you guys think about all of this. Are you impressed with the PlayStation 5 Pro? Are you impressed with PSSR? Are you impressed that a lot of the games that are 30 FPS will be running at 60 FPS on the PlayStation Pro? What are your thoughts on this price? Now, this is apparently without the disk drive. So if you want a disk drive, you're gonna have to fork out, I don't know, it's like 79 US dollars for the disk drive. So that's an additional cost now a lot of people are digital these days so it might not affect many but some will still like the ability to have um your physical hardware and i'm one of those like i do buy most of my games digital but i still do buy physical games and i think it is important that the console supports physical games so uh, you're gonna have to add that cost in if you want to have your physical games but apart from that i still think it's a good price. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Like I usually say, please like, share, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.